Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. In today's episode, we are going to wrap up this larger portrait painting that we started several, several uh, weeks ago. So we are now going to enter into the selective render stage. And on the palette here, titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and neo McGilpa medium. And if you would like to know of or purchase the same exact materials that I'm using, I now have the materials typed up in the description box down below with their associated Amazon affiliate links. So if you do happen to click on one of those links and buy the same type of materials that I have, Amazon will pay me a small amount. So thank you so much in advance if you decide to do that. So let's go ahead and mix up the color value web. So I'm going to use a little bit of neo McGilp medium. So we're going to use Burnt Umber, Alizarin Crimson Permanent. This is actually my first mixture on this brand new brush. Oh, this is such a wonderful moment. Okay, anyway, now we're going into the Sap Green. Cadmium Red, so Cadmium Red, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue. Now we're gonna work our way up the value scale. So we're gonna use Flake White, Cadmium Yellow, deep now the yellow ochre more neomagilt medium more flake white now we're going to put in the cadmium red all right so flake white see the thing that i like about flake white is it allows me to use so much more of it without raising the value thus allowing a thicker consistency of paint and that's all all right, so now cadmium orange, and of course these flesh tone mixtures, I'm trying to make them a little bit more orangey. So usually with the color value web, you can tint it however you want. You know, with the other painting, the ongoing painting that we have, um, the other larger portrait, uh, our model has more of the uh, pinker uh, flesh tones. Where in this scenario, we have, I think we have a little more in the more in the orangey side. So now we're going to raise the value a little bit more even more so that should be about good for the color value web and i'm going to select areas in the painting now to add the uh, selective render to and i think i'm going to focus primarily on the hands and the face because i want the rest to kind of recede i don't want the rest of the painting you know the background or the drapery or anything like that to take focus away from the main focal point. So in the lighter areas, we're gonna have the cadmium yellow medium, but only a little bit, and the titanium white. That should be about good. Though I did say I was going to work on the face and the hands, after standing back just in terms of composition, I think that um, you know these lights that I had, as you can see in the photo reference, they're there, but they're much uh, more subtle. Uh, so as you recall, um, I think it was like over a week ago now, I took this painting to the Hood College portrait group to apply the um, the perceptual color stage. So what you're seeing here in terms of the colors, I, I think are closer to nature, or I, I think, um, than the photo reference. So even though um, you're seeing the photo reference there, just know that these colors I selected from working, uh, selected by working from life. But just in terms of the composition, okay, just in terms of the aesthetic, I think that um, I want to drop the value down for that. So what a convenient area on the palette. Why not over here, okay? So I'm gonna use the ivory black, a different brush. And I think right now we're actually gonna glaze a little bit. So using a little more of the uh, Neo McGill medium. Oh, whoops, got paint on this brush. Oh no. Okay, so let's see. Can we apply a semi-transparent application of paint? So I wanna drop down the value, but only a little bit. And since this is going to be the final stage, um, you know, as is usually recommended, you want to use more medium as you increase the number of layers. That doesn't mean use a lot of medium like I am. Uh, you know, you don't have to use this much medium. It might actually be easier to just remix uh, the color altogether, but 
you know, just, just know that the fat over lean principle in oil painting uh, usually, or usually want to add more medium as you increase the number of layers. I'm going to stand back and see if that looks at all like what I wanted it to look like. So I did say I wanted to apply a little bit of a glaze, but that's not looking right. So I'm going to use the ivory black, the flake white. See, this is how we problem solve. A lizard crimson, permanent, a little more ultramarine. So I get a mixture that's the value that I want. Ivory black, a lizard and crimson permanent, and again. Okay, I think that's a little better. So it wasn't quite what I had in mind, and I think that's just because I was trying to glaze on a um, you know value that was just way way too dark. You know, when you're glazing, I don't really think that it's a good idea to glaze too dark. I mean, you want to glaze darker, of course, but uh, maybe not as dark as I was going. Okay, so that still looks kind of strange, but I think we'll, we'll figure it out. What I want is for this just not to take away from, you know, the main focus, which is over here and then down here, and then all through here with the drapery. So of course I'm gonna leave some of the brush strokes to show through. Um, that's just my style, that's just my aesthetic, that's just the taste that I have in painting, where you can see the brush strokes, it's kinda like being able to see the thoughts of the artist that created the painting. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little darker here. So I'm deciding to show you more painting footage for better or for worse. Um, you know, the, the thing that people usually tell me when I uh, meet them in public, and they're like, you know, I wish I could catch up with all of your videos. You do put a lot of videos out there. Um, if only I had the time to catch up on them, which kind of deters me, okay? It does really deter me. I feel like maybe I'm putting too much out there, but I don't know. I just want to be able to share this experience with you. And there's just so much involved in painting. I think that, you know, just trying to show, you know, like a more compressed episode probably doesn't give you the entire, uh, it, it probably doesn't give you as much insight into the artist's, uh, you know, mindset as seeing this longer footage, but I don't know. I really don't know any other artists that do this kind of thing, you know, filming themselves every single day, talking to the camera every single day, but I don't know. I hope it's helping you out. I hope that you're able to watch at least some of this. Now going back in here, making this darker. I'm going to stand back, try not to bump into the camera. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, in the future, I think that, you know, once I get a camera crew and like a more professional setup, you know, maybe it will be once a week or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe three times a week. I, I don't know. But for now, this is the, the thing that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to bring the experience to you. All right, so what I'm doing is just softening these little darker shapes above. Kind of probably wasting time doing that. I'm gonna just leave that be, and I'm gonna get into the, uh, you know, the flesh tones. I think that the photo reference is pushing the contrast between here and here way too much. In life, it was much more subtle, okay? Um, a little bit closer to what this is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a smaller brush now and there really isn't much left for me to do um, but I do think that you know perhaps trying to make some of these transitions a little more um, uh, add a little more volume to these transitions. 
So I'm gonna start off with the side plane of the nose. So let, let's get you in the close up. So you are now in close up. Just know that the camera is at an angle with respect to the canvas, which will add a little bit of distortion, but uh, I think that, I think we'll be okay. So with this one brush, hopefully you can see this mixture, a little bit of this alizarin sap green. I'm pretty sure I have the autofocus off, so I don't think the palette was in focus. Sorry about that. But I just want the focus to remain here. But all right. So, you know, little areas such as this, like this plane, is a little too ambiguous. So it's a very transparent, uh, semi-transparent application of paint. Uh, though that is a little too orangey, but I don't know. I kind of like the orangey touch to it. I'm actually putting a little bit of, well, hopefully you can see this, hopefully you can see this, a little bit of ultramarine blue into this area here. Now, uh, some may refer to this as mud, others may refer to this as a flesh tone. Um, I'm thinking of this more of just a color in relation to the surrounding colors, and I'm also thinking about the value. What bothered me was the value, but I do think that a little more of an orangey touch probably wouldn't hurt too much. And this is the, the way that we're going to be approaching the selective render, okay? The selective render doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I'm going to go into like an eye, like the eye and spend like uh, an eternity on it trying to make it look like super, super, super realistic. So I guess I probably should. I mean, it'll probably get me more views, I guess, but I don't know. It's just not my, not my style. And like I said, I mean, every single one of us, we have our own unique individual um, signature. You know, signature doesn't mean, uh, I, I don't mean signature as in the literal hand signature or handwriting or anything like that. I just mean it's really up to you how, you know, you want something to look. Now, if this was a more academic study, then, you know, I would probably try to push the realism in the eye and like in everything. Um, but if I do that, I run the risk of getting too close to the photo reference. And that's just not something I want to do. It's not my aesthetic. It's not my taste in painting. So now that I have that plane mapped out, I'm going to look at this side plane of the nose there. And I think that the hue is in a little trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a clean and dry, uh, clean and dry brush, okay? And I'm going to scatter. So I'm diffusing the paint a little bit, just so that the color underneath shows through. But you know, there's still a little glimpse of that value here showing through. So um, yeah, in the selective render stage. It can take as long as you want it to. I mean, this could probably span several, several days, several, several episodes. You know, if I want to make something super, super finished. But the, uh, you know, the, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pick and choose areas that, you know, need more focus. So right here, I think that that value, see, that's the uh-oh <laughs> value. Uh, so I'm going to do a few more little final touches here and I'm going to leave this be, at least the face. I don't know, I might stand back later and then see that it might need more. But it's all really up to your taste, you know. If you want your painting to look super, super realistic, like digital or like a photograph or something, and you can do that, that's just not not my aesthetic. So I'm thinking that, you know, I like the way that, you know, this color uh, is pushing the contrast and color in relation to this one. You know, this is warmer, or sorry, more orangey. This is more pinkish. So really what I'm doing now is just choosing areas to uh, kind of soften. So this over here is a little too heavy handed of a brush stroke. So I'm just going to soften it. And I'm pretty sure that this is stuff that, um, you know, 
you probably won't see too much from artists. You know, artists typically want to show you the finished result. Artists usually want to show you when it looks exactly like a photograph or something like that. You know, not really showing you the in-between stuff. I'm trying to show you uh, everything. softening a little bit there. So in terms of glazing, hopefully you can see this, so a little bit of medium, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this darker middle tone. I'm not entirely sure if this will work, but I, I'm going to try to glaze over here. It's because that was getting a little too, too light. So now that I've applied this lighter area, what I'm going to do is get the, uh, the clean and dry brush and scatter. So this is how I glaze whenever I do glaze. I don't always glaze, but when I do, I scatter the paint. I try to scatter and diffuse the paint using the transparent application of paint to um, you know cover a broad area such as that and maybe over here but these are kind of like final final things you know uh, you wouldn't want to do this I don't think you'd want to do this um, if you were in the middle of the painting it's going to lighten this value a little bit you know, you want the, the thinnest of the thin paint to be applied at the end. And in this way, we can see all the layers now. Let me get you a really super close up so you can see what I'm talking about with the layers. This is what I'm talking about, the layers, okay? So over here, you can see a little bit of the awesome factor, the underpainting showing through. Over here, you can clearly tell that this layer is existing over this one. And you can tell that, you know, these kind of marks over here were layered over top of this one. So somewhere around here was probably, uh, you know, here and here. That was probably the local, uh, local color stage. And then these colors over here, you know, this one, this one. Let's see if I can move the camera down. Uh, sorry for the shake, you know, like this one this one you know these were added in the perceptual color stage you know when I took this to work on it from life and I, I love this stuff like being able to see the layers um, you know add up to one another it's a really really uh, pleasant thing to, to see you know not just having a perfect polished finish uh, rather being able to see the layers through kind of like a stained glass window like this being able to see this through that, like how this rests on top of that, how this rests on top of that, you know. And here you are even closer. I mean, the camera is like probably two inches away from the painting, okay? You can still see like how this rests on top of that, this rests on top of this, this rests on top of that, just all of this layering. Now I'm going to work on this little area here, you know, how the hair overlaps the, uh, the figure. I think that that can be described with a little more clarity. So now I'm just going in with the, a combination of uh, you know, the darker values that we mixed up on the color value web, but just a little bit warmer. So there's a little more uh, alizarin and crimson in it. And now I really want to make the hair, uh, you know, look like it's resting on top of her shoulder. I'm going to have a few brushes out, okay, so uh, hopefully you can see this. So let's mix this one right here, and a little bit of the sap green into here, just so we get that, you know, fading back, you know, the hair, or the flesh tones transitioning into the hair. We want to get that really subtle, soft edge. Softer here.
a little bit of softer transition here. A little lighter over here. So we're actually getting the back of the sternocleidomastoid. There's a hair that's kind of embedded into the painting. I don't know how I'm going to get that off. A little piece of uh, bristle hair. Oh well. That's character. Gonna get the larger brush that we use to charge up the flesh tones. Actually, that's the wrong one. Whoops. Okay, there we go. I guess we can raise this value a little more. It's because there is a little more light hitting here. But I'm still trying to follow the um, you know, the color and value patterns underneath. So we're kind of closing up the forms here for the neck. I got distracted. Wasn't I working here? So, uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. I'm working on one area and then all of a sudden I'm distracted. I'm working in a completely other area, but uh, I guess working our way from here to here shouldn't hurt. Now back into the photo reference. Let's take a look at the photo reference. So there's a little bit of a glimpse of the hair going and overlapping here. It's kind of neat, so let's put that in. I guess that adds a little more believability you know, to the hair. Softening that edge. Uh, right now we're going to put this little strand of hair. I put that strand of hair in before and then ended up taking it out. Now I'm putting it back in. Okay, softer edge there, though it's kind of sharp. There we go. I want that edge to be very soft. And like I usually say, um, you know, when you're layering a painting, you want to go a little bit um, lighter and a little bit softer. And this is why, because in the end, you know, now I can sharpen the edges of focus. You know, here I'll actually sharpen a little bit more say than here, you know, but even though these are still softer than say um, this edge, now we're adding much more nuance to these shapes. Now we're just going to add a little glaze to the hair over here. Oh, that's just nice. That's nice. Now you can see the layers underneath. Pretty cool. If you ask me. And that's why I say usually I want to go lighter and softer because now in the end notice how I'm able to glaze. You know this probably isn't like textbook glazing like how you would you know glaze in a traditional art school but it should follow the same kind of principle. Thinning down the paint and uh, you know working over top of a lighter layer A little more dark back here. I think that's pretty good for the hair. Now from a distance it should look like the hair is resting on top of the shoulders uh, with a little more believability and um, you know we put in some more subtlety. We glazed a little bit on the chin, a little bit on the side plane of the nose and in the background over here. So like I said, the selective render doesn't necessarily mean you know, that you have to um, finish a certain area, you know, like spend a, an eternity on a certain area and try to uh, take it as far as uh, you know, like a camera or some kind of digital rendition of something. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but now of what I think, I'm gonna leave this be. I, I really like the, uh, you know, the color harmonies and the uh, layers that I can see. Uh, through these uh, areas here, 
Um, but what I'm going to do, actually first, let me soften that with a soft edge. Anyway, I just wanted to soften that. Now what I'm going to do is take the selective render uh, to the hands. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky because the hand further away from us is very, really ambitious. Ambitious? It's, um, it's vague, so it would be ambitious for me to try to render that one out way too much. So I think I'm going to uh, target focus a little bit, you know, put a little more focus, say, on this hand and then the values around here and soften these areas over here um, on this hand. All right, so with the hand, though I really like the way that this uh, pinker tone is is showing through, I think that I need to describe a little bit more a darker transition here. And of course it's a little more orangey, so I am kind of pushing the color a little bit. So that whole area is now a plane. This is going up, over, down, in there. It's gonna be a lighter shape, lighter and cooler, so I don't know if you can see this, um, but the titanium white, ultramarine blue into this area. I should have mixed up the rails, the cool rail, the warm rail, uh, but I think we'll be fine like this. So it's going to be lighter here. It's going to be darker in here. So I'm actually going to have to get a smaller brush. So hopefully you can see, so it's probably not in focus, uh, but a little bit of a darker value here. A little more Neo McGill medium. Now it's going to be a little darker, but not super dark around here. And when you've put a, a lot of layers into a painting, the film of the painting, you know, the, the paint feels more and more, uh, I don't know how to describe it, of substance. Like it, it feels like I'm painting on top of something that like has a lot of layers of oil paint. It has a really nice kind of like official kind of feeling like, like an old master painting or something like that. Just also something really satisfying to, um, you know, the feeling, the feeling you get like this, like layering on the paint. A little darker over here. I don't know why I went lighter with this brush. That was supposed to be my dark brush. So let's get the lighter brush out here. Whoa, that's too light. Now this finger is a little bit um, ambiguous, so now I'm going to put a little more of a articulated uh, design to this this pinky so you know rather than it being kind of like like that like the shape that it is I'm going to now uh, you know choose the bottom of the finger so suppose it's gonna go let's make it darker let's suppose it's gonna go over here All right so now I'm saying that's the bottom of the finger now I'm gonna look at the back side so like the like the knuckle of the finger the phalange goes here 
Now this is the, um, so there's a knuckle here, a knuckle here. This one is the one that was a little ambiguous. It goes up towards here, so it's, I'm kind of outlining it right now. And I'll get rid of the outline. Once I figure out where these shapes go, And of course, I'm going to put in a little shadow tone. So with the sap green, a little bit of a darker, whoops, got to make that darker, darker tone underneath here. So far, this palette, um, this new palette that I have here, uh, it's really working quite nice. It's not too heavy. It's nicely balanced. So a little darker here. Now you're seeing how I'm starting to uh, differentiate like this plane here from that plane. It's a little more specificity. Now there's a darker shape under here that's, that needs a little more attention. Let's bring the light brush a darker plane here, the knuckle of the pinky, now the lighter side plane of the pinky goes here. Now the big thing I think is the bottom plane is missing. So there, got to put in the bottom plane Still looks a little strange, but we're working it out. Darker here. So I'm going to let the value drop a little bit down here. Darker here in front of the fingernail. You know, even in the last stage, like, I'm not going to put too much focus into the fingernails, though they're there. I'm not going to focus too much on them. And I think over here needs to be a little more descriptive. So a little bit of a darker shape there. I think I'm also missing a little bit of the bottom plane under here. So I'm pushing the hue a little bit, making it a little warmer. So we can see the bottom plane of the hands. So now with the sap green, cadmium, yellow medium, flake white, burnt umber, with the wrong brush. I should have got a new brush for this. But it will. So we're going to start to push, or we're going to start to close up the uh, outlines around the fingers. It's actually going to be a little darker and warmer over here, like so. This outline here. And again, I'm not following the color. Um, the color scheme from the picture, as you're noticing. All right, I'm going to clean off the brush a little bit. The odorless mineral spirits. So now what I'm going to do is get the dark brush again. We're going to take from the darker, warmer region of the um, flesh tone. Darker over here. There's an accent here. Where the thumb overlaps the corner of the pointer finger. A 
little bit lighter and more red. Now I'm going to switch to the, whoops, never mind. I uh, put green back onto this brush, so we'll use that to put in this darker tone. And then what I'll do is just get another brush and I'm going to put in this lighter, more pinkish tone. I guess that's more orangey. There we go. I realize the palette must be blocking some of the footage, so let me just show you <laughs> since the palette is there. Um, I'm getting used to this palette, so forgive me if uh, the palette has blocked some of the footage, or probably a lot of it. Sorry. Now I'm going to get a clean and dry brush. Just kind of mush the paint there together. Okay, and now the accents between the fingers should be, I think, the last thing I'll do for that, that hand. Again, I don't want to over-describe anything. And, um, you know, if you want to know how to keep from overworking a painting, though, you know, maybe I'm overworking this, but... One way to keep from overworking a painting is just, just to stand back. You know, don't be too close to your painting. Even if you're, you know, putting in very, very tiny shapes. Try to stand back as often as possible. You know, if you're painting and listening to me right now, just try to stand back a little bit. Try to stand back. Get some perspective on your painting. All right, so now we have those darker shapes in there. Now with the other hand, um, what I'm gonna do, let's get the camera to focus on it first. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the light a little bit because I think there should be a little more of a lighter plane here. Okay, so I'm gonna push the light a little bit in the light most facing planes. But I'm gonna, see that? I'm gonna leave some brush strokes to show through and then I'm gonna go and put in the patterns uh, for the uh, the fabric so I'm gonna start off I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna approach uh, one of them and then I'll just go and put in the rest of them so there's a little bit of a dark green a little bit of a dark green tone here and that goes all the way back here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it out just like outline it. So it goes in here and here. Then I'm going to get the Neo McGill medium, a little bit of the cadmium yellow and the sap green, cadmium yellow medium. So I'm going to fill in the shape. Okay, I'll, I'll show you for one one segment since this is going to be really repetitive I'm going to show you for one segment and then do it for the rest on my own so this is going to be for the green segment okay all right so now a smaller brush a thinner application of paint we're going to put in the design Okay, and then all of the little like zigzag things here, like you know, doesn't have to be perfect. But anyway, this, this is a detail stuff, so it's gonna get repetitive. So I'll do the do this with the rest of these shapes. All right, now we have painted in all of these little details. Like I said, I showed you how I painted one of those little. Um, 
or I guess it was this one. I showed you how I painted one of those little shapes and then I went ahead and applied the rest of that kind of thinking uh, to the rest of this. But of course I didn't really follow uh, the design of the photo reference that closely. I kind of made my own kind of thing here. And then I drew in my bearded dragon a little bit here, like his eyes, the ear, his mouth, and it's kind of vague and then who knows what that is. It's just kind of zigzag uh, shapes. So again, like not, not really heavily focused on the details. And again, all of these edges are pretty soft, so I didn't want, you know, this to pop out too much. I did put a little bit more uh, information into this hand just so it would read a little bit better and then a little more into this. Now this was a stool with a pillow so instead of following that kind of reference uh, the photo reference being flat I kind of made this as you notice sink in a little bit more because it was a stool with a pillow and I thought it just made more sense to paint it you know like sunken in as opposed to the the way that it is on the photo reference and now with just a little tiny brush some odorless mineral spirits we're going to use the cadmium red to sign this picture And we also signed it in red, so I, I think that the camera was frozen at that time because the SD card got full. But anyway, I signed it right up here in red. And that's going to be about it for today's episode, and that's going to be about it for this larger uh, portrait painting that we have been working on for several, several episodes now. I really do hope that it helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And if you would like to support this channel even more, we have a Patreon account. That being said, always and always remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. And I'll see you tomorrow.